Welcome to the Weekly Vincentian Podcast, sponsored by the Office of Mission and Values at DePaul University. This series is designed to provide members of the university community with insights into Vincentian history, mission, and spirituality to help sustain us in our shared efforts to live out the mission, vision, and values of DePaul. This week's podcast is an original essay written and read by Rev. Edward Udovic. It is entitled, Vincent's Values, A Spiritual Perspective. Vincent de Paul was a man with a mission in life. His mission emerged directly from his faith. From his faith, a clear set of values emerged that guided him and his followers in the accomplishment of their mission. Vincent's spirituality, his faith as a Christian, was profoundly Christocentric. As a result of his own gradual conversion, he eventually chose to model his daily life and ministry according to the example of Jesus Christ as portrayed in the Gospels. As Father Bob Maloney points out, Vincent de Paul's vision of Christ is an original one. For him, Christ is most of all the evangelizer of the poor. He is a missionary Christ, coming from the Creator and returning to Him, emptying Himself of His condition as Son of God in order to free His people from the bondage both corporal and spiritual in which they are chained. He identifies with and makes His home within the poor themselves. His vision is universal impelling him to preach the good news to the poor, even to the end of the earth. This Christ draws others together, male and female, rich and poor, and forms them to share in his mission. Let us remember the parable of the Good Samaritan that we find in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test him and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law, how do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. From personal experience, Vincent recognized that effective Christ-like actions could only emerge from and be sustained by an authentic conversion resulting from an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. As he once said, God asks first for your heart and only then for your work. Vincent's insight is, of course, the core insight and choice confronting every believer and indeed the church itself through the ages. In order to act like Christ... I, we, must be like Christ. In order for my, our actions to be Christ-like, I, we, must be like Christ, to the extent that my, our, human faith, frailties, and trust in God's grace and providence allow. We turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 16 to 21. He came to Nazareth where he had been reared, and entering the synagogue on the Sabbath, as he was in the habit of doing, he stood up to do the reading. When the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed him, he unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, therefore he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and release to prisoners to announce a year of favor from the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he gave it back to the assistant and sat down. 
All in the synagogue had their eyes fixed on him. Then he began by saying to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. I have often remarked that the official Latin title of the Congregation of the Mission is Congregatio Missionis, while an accurate translation of this is the Congregation of the Mission. For our purposes, a literal translation proves to be both more accurate and more relevant. Congregatio Missionis, people gather together for the sake of the mission. This retranslation radically breaks open the inherent contemporary possibilities and power of Vincent's mission as it broadly extends the invitation and the opportunity to serve in the tradition of Vincent. The work of retranslation does not, must not, stop here. Vincent's prayerful contemplation led him to identify five virtues or values that characterize Christ, which he then personally adopted and recommended to the members of the congregation of the mission. I would describe these five values as constituting what I call the Vincentian Transcendental Imperatives. By this I mean they are the values that an individual Christian and follower of Vincent de Paul recognize as being the necessary prerequisites for Vincentian discipleship. When such a person makes the decision to believe and accept these values in an act of transcendent self-definition, they then take on the nature of an imperative of conscience and call to action for that person. I choose to be Christ-like, and I choose to be Christ-like by embracing these values as my own. This is who I choose to be. This is who I choose to become, standing side by side with every other believer who is making the same choices and freely accepting the consequences of these choices. In traditional spiritual language, Vincent described these virtues using these terms, humility, simplicity, meekness, mortification, and zeal. Expressed as transcendental imperatives, they would be phrased as, be humble, be meek, be simple, be mortified, be zealous. I would suggest, however, that given the vast horizon shifts between the 17th century and our own, for us to fully appreciate exactly what Vincent meant by these values, a translation into contemporary English and contemporary concept is necessary. Therefore, I would suggest, be simple can be translated as, be honest. Be meek can be translated as, be approachable. Be mortified can be translated as, be self-disciplined. Be humble can be translated as be realistic. Be zealous can be translated as be hardworking. In order to serve as Christ serve, I must be honest, which means I must fearlessly seek the truth wherever it is to be found, recognize the truth when I find it, witness to the truth by my words, and live the truth to the best of my ability by my actions, as they relate to myself, my neighbor, my world, and my God. Vincent testified that simplicity, or as we have translated it, honesty, was the virtue that he valued most. He went so far as to describe it as being his gospel. The transparent strength of this value, in the end, determines the relative strength and effectiveness of the other values. In order to serve as Christ serve, I must be approachable, which means I must make myself personally available in relationships that are authentic and thus inviting, inclusive, accepting, understanding, equal, and loving. In order to serve as Christ serve, I must be self-disciplined, which means I must be absolutely clear about what I believe, what I value, and what are the priorities in my life. I must then impose upon myself the self-discipline that will enable me to live these values in a consistent, integrated, and effective manner. In order to serve as Christ serve, I must be realistic, which means I must always creatively balance the inherent tensions between pessimism and optimism, knowing full well what I and other human beings are capable of and not capable of, and gratefully relying on God's grace and providence as the sustaining force of our lives and indeed of all salvation history. In order to serve as Christ served, I must be hard working. There is always much to be done in the kingdom of God, and what remains to be done both personally and corporately is not easily accomplished without laboring with the strength of our arms and the sweat of our brows. As Father Bob Maloney has also pointed out, the word character usually denotes a seal, a sign, 
a visible mark by which someone or something can be recognized. The virtues described here in 17th and 21st century forms are, to use St. Vincent's phrase, the characteristic virtues of his followers. It is vitally important that each era reinterpret these signs in order that the spirit of St. Vincent might continue to live in a way that is relevant in each succeeding age. The contemporary reinterpretation of these values is the foundation of our contemporary recommitment to these values.